But while I was researching my next video to Stefan Milo, I stumbled across something that was so interesting to me, I figured I would make a video about that first. So the gist of it, I think maybe I stumbled across some evidence that shows that there was some crop domestication from much further before we previously expected and that it was feralized again, specifically rice. So a few disclaimers here. Number one, I am not a geneticist. Do not assume this is authoritative. Do not assume this is a strong opinion. Do not assume this is a belief. This is something I've been researching the last couple of days and I was like, well, that's pretty interesting. I would very much like to see a geneticist look into this. I'm, and even then, I, I don't want to get into the world of pseudoscience here. I am not trying to make any hypothesis or anything here. I use that term a lot, but I'm not going to use it here because I'm stepping my feet too deep into science. And basically, if I to draw a metaphor, I look at things a little bit differently because of the dating than a regular scientist or geneticist would. So if we're lost in the woods, the geneticist is the adult and I'm this little kid and I just happen to see a little path that's much lower and that's out of their point of view and all I'm saying is, is this a viable thing or should I just fuck off with this? So anyway, to begin with, do not take this as real data. Take this as a compass at the very best to point to something that may be. As we go through this, I'll be using layman's terms so that people can understand what I'm saying, and I will post the appropriate stuff on the screen somewhere because any geneticists that do look into this, I don't want them to feel like they've got to like dig through two hours worth of shit just to get to where I started from. So as dating is the issue of contention here, I don't have a paper that says rice was domesticated 200 bajillion years ago. I've got data points that I pulled from several different papers and I'll be showing you what I put together and why I think what I think might be a viable alternative. Basically, um, it feels to me like maybe they're just not looking back far enough in time. Um, the genetic equivalent of a, like an archeologist not digging enough, not digging deep enough, deep enough to find the older layers. It's the same kind of thing here. If they're not looking back far enough, they might not actually be seeing what's going on. But again, I am not a geneticist. <laughs> And to begin with, there's a lot of confusion about the genetics of rice, about where it became domesticated first. There's a lot of assertions that it was in the Yangtze Valley, but there's a lot of genetic traits that tend to make it look like it was domesticated in numerous different areas at numerous different times. And there's a lot of papers that will say all kinds of stuff to the point where there's papers that assert that we don't really have wild rice anymore, that it's all been adulterated with our modern domesticated rice. It's very confusing compared to other crops from the time. Now, when looking at a lost civilization, feralization of a crop is something that's going to come up. And feralization is not quite the opposite of domestication, but it's very similar. It's where a crop is reintroduced to the wild or is crossbred with something from the wild more frequently and takes on some traits of feral crops again in order to survive. Now the number one thing with rice that we'll be talking about is a thing called seed shattering, which should be called seed scattering. So if you hear me say that a few times, don't be surprised because that's what my brain keeps wanting to say when I read it. But anyway, basically what it is, is that in the wild, when rice grows to maturity, most things, they drop their fruit immediately or their seeds hit the ground as soon as they're mature because otherwise they get eaten off the vine, right? But we don't want that, especially with rice because it ends up in the damn water. So. We, we breed them to not drop their fruit until we come and grab them. And there's actually kind of a fine line because we still want it to come off and we thresh it, right? We go smack the grain on the ground. We want the grain to come off. So there's a fine line between being on there too much or not enough. But it's one of the first things you're going to see if something is reintroduced to the wild. One of the first things it's going to do is start dropping its seeds again as soon as they get mature. Otherwise, it's going to have a hard time competing. Now, in the case of rice, we see a lot of redundant genes for this. We see a lot of genes that are doing the same job multiple times. And there is one gene that is considered the benchmark for the domestication of rice that stops seed shattering. And that is what the gene that they use to date the rice a domestication to about eight to 12,000 years ago. There are numerous overlapping genes that create gene shattering. So arguably there are numerous ways to inhibit gene shattering. H24 just being the benchmark we have chosen because it popped up in our timeline at around 10,000 years ago. Our papers published by geneticists that say that wild rice is most likely a hybrid of feral and domestic rice. And that would make things a little bit difficult for us to parse by genes, especially when you look at the margin of error that they have when they're looking at exact timelines. 
when they're doing these things, like many branches of science, they reinforce their dates from many different directions. And I think that might be where they're missing the boat here. They're having a lot of confusion. If you read these papers, there is 101 different directions that they take this and, and every paper pretty much begins in the abstract with the domestication of rice is something in the, of a point of contention throughout the last blah, blah, blah years. Genetics haven't cleared this up. All they've really done is muddied the water. Basically, what I'm wondering is if this rice wasn't domesticated much longer ago, 20,000 years ago or so, and then reverted into a wild state again, feralized, and then domesticated once again. This would explain the multiple domesticated traits that we see that are secondary that show up, but why that it still had seed scattering as a big deal, because that seed scattering is going to show up as soon as it goes back into nature. Now, there's a certain genus of rice that popped up around 18, 24,000 years ago, they're not 100% sure, but um, it branched off of another thing, and maybe that was this hybridization of wild and domesticated rice, because it really did well and took off and very soon was being uh, cultivated in early uh, Neolithic farms, proto-Neolithic farms, before there was domesticated rice. But I'm not trying to weasel in here and play God of the Gaps. In wild rice, we have overlapping redundant genes for seed shattering. It is something they do, it, it looks like to me as a layperson, overlapping redundant genes would seem that multiple times potentially it had been domesticated, they pulled the shattering out of it, then it goes back and they do something else. When we find modern rice that's been re-feralized, frequently it still has the H24 gene that they use as the benchmark for the seed shattering but it still shatters. It's found a different way to do it, but it still has the gene. So this could have happened before is my point. So basically I would love to have somebody who knows more about this shit weigh in on this, look at it and be like, this doesn't make sense or this does make sense or whatever. I don't want to hang my hat on this. Again, I'm not a geneticist. I'm not trying to play scientist here. This is just something that I saw and I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Most of the other crops, we've got this pretty, pretty neat timeline by comparison with rice. It's just kind of this big old shit show. We have no clue. Well, possibly it was domesticated much earlier. I don't know. At any rate, show what you think down in the comments. Tag any geneticists, you know, let them know about this if you would, please, because I would really love to hear this bore out. But, you know, if they're not interested in looking into it, they're not interested in looking into it. Who the hell am I? Anyway, thank you very much for watching this far. Have a good evening. More to come soon.